Great. So if you could turn in your uh, workbook, please, to 315. And if you're watching this video and you don't have a workbook, you just have a textbook, um, I'm going to cover all the, uh, all the main turns and everything anyways. So this is 6.4, and we're going to talk about the uh, brand new terms that we're going to use here this section. And I'll just read this uh, sort of intro, and it kind of gives you a, um, an idea of what these terms mean, as well as having the definitions on the side. So, at times you may want to, or have to, borrow money from a lending institution, such as a bank or credit union, to make a large purchase, such as a house or a car. There are different ways to borrow money. A loan is a fixed amount of money that you can borrow all at once. Interest is calculated from the date you receive the money until the final date of the loan. When you take out the loan, you usually sign an agreement of how much you will pay for a certain length of time. So the length of time um, required to pay back a loan is called the amortization period. Okay, Amortization. It's a really strange word, but it basically means how long do you want to stretch out the repayment process. Okay. So you guys know a little bit already about interest. So do you think that it would cost more to stretch it out longer? Or would it cost more to shrink it up your amortization period? Yeah, it would cost more if you stretch it out longer to pay it back. Totally. Because remember, interest is calculating all the time. So as long as there's money in there you know, that's calculating interest on, you're getting more interest. So yeah, so if the amortization period is smaller, you're going to end up paying less interest, but you're going to end up paying more per payment. Right? So there's a, there's a balance there. Okay. A bank line of credit, okay, so this is something new as well we haven't really talked about in this class, allows you to borrow money as needed up to a pre-approved amount. So if you have a line of credit at your institution, your banking institution, you don't have to take that money out now. As a matter of fact, you don't have to take that money out at all. It's a pre-approved loan that if and when in the future you need money and you don't have that money in your, your account, and you, you, that's too much money to put on a credit card, or maybe you say, I don't have credit cards, I don't want credit cards. So you can get this kind of thing, it's called a line of credit. And it's basically, the, the bank gives you whatever money you need up to this certain maximum, and then you just pay on the money that you borrow kind of when you borrow it. So it's kind of like a loan, but it's, you don't have to go through the process of applying for the loan every time. All right. So you'll be charged interest only on the amount of money that you use. Okay, so there's two um, main terms here that we've now talked about. The third one is this. Your bank may also offer overdraft protection. How many of you have, have ever heard of overdraft protection? Okay, question or are you saying yes? Yeah. Sorry? Oh, is it? Oh, how's that, better? Okay, sorry, it's been frozen. I've just been highlighting some notes here. So overdraft protection, all right, overdraft protection. Basically, it allows you to withdraw more money than you have in the bank, and it will still allow that money to go to, to go out, um, but you'll be charged a fee usually. So let's say I have 100 bucks in my bank account, and I buy something for $110. Sometimes, now sometimes, you'll try and do that with a bank card, and then it'll get declined, right? It'll say insufficient funds, okay? That's probably happened to all of us. But um, if your bank account and if your bank gives you overdraft protection, they'll allow you to take out a little bit more if, if that happens in an emergency situation where it's only like $10 or maybe up to $50 or $100 or whatever, whatever the agreement is, they'll allow you to take that much extra out and then your balance will show like a negative. You'll have like less than zero in your account. <laughs> like you owe the bank a little bit extra. So that's what overdraft protection is. So you can actually take out a little bit more money than you have in there, the bank will cover you because they know that you're putting money in regularly or they trust you, okay? Okay, um, we're gonna talk a lot about this today. Um, you may have heard of some places that offer emergency loans. They're called payday loans. Any of you ever heard of that or seen those stores downtown? You know, um, payday loans or whatever they are, cash, whatever. They're usually not a good idea because the interest rates are super, super high and we're gonna actually find out exactly what those interest rates are, they're crazy. So, um, yeah, you want to stay away from payday loans at all if you can. <laughs> kind of like loan sharks, you know? You ever seen those old movies with the loan sharks? You get the money from a loan shark? Oh, they'll lend you money, all right, but they'll <laughs> remove your arm if you don't pay. <laughs> Whatever, like, it's like, the interest is super exorbitant, right? Super high, it's 
it's not good. <laughs> Anyways, so if you, do, if you can't make your loan payments, as you've agreed, you are said to default on the loan. And if you default on the loan, it means that you, you're not following your side of the bargain there, you're not following through, then your company that you take money from or whatever, they can pursue legal action because you've broken the contract. Okay? So there are five, I think, five terms that you should know now. Okay, these five right here, amortization period, the length of time required to pay back a loan, a line of credit, it's like a, a pre-approved loan, overdraft protection, you can actually take a little bit more out of your account than you actually have there, the bank will cover you for that if you have this overdraft protection. A payday loan is, mm, I'm not sure exactly how they work, I've stayed away from them, but I think you go in there with some kind of former pay slip or proof of, of employment or something. And I think that they have, they, they have to have some idea of how much you're going to get paid. It's kind of like you need to borrow money like a week or something before you get paid. And so you just have to have proof of employment. They give you money. You sign a bunch of papers. And then when you get paid, you got to zip right in there and pay them. It's like usually they have to be paid off within like, you know, a week or two. That kind of thing. It's just to kind of get you from one paycheck to another if you need it. Okay. And then default here is the last one. If you don't pay off your loan, you're in default. Okay. So let's go through this example here. This is an example talking about those payday loans that we talked about. So Richard's car insurance is fourteen hundred bucks. It was it's uh, and it's due in two days, and he did not have the cash available. He went to a payday loan store for a loan. He had to repay the store sixteen hundred and thirty-five dollars and twenty cents within fourteen days. That was the agreement. So here is the original amount that he borrowed from them, and this is what he had to pay back. So the questions that you're going to be asked about these sorts of situations is, you know, how much was the interest? That's easy to calculate. What was the interest rate per day and what was the interest rate per year? So we want to find out, you know, they, they, they give us an amount of money extra that you have to pay, but we want to find out what that interest rate actually is so we compare it to other loans and other things. So here's A, what was the daily interest for the loan? Well, and you have the solution in your workbook there, so I'll just kind of walk through it a little bit with you. Instead of writing it out, it's here in your book, so let's just take a look. Next page. Um, so the amount of interest is simply the difference between what he has to pay back and what he borrowed. So it's $235.20. All right. So if we're trying to calculate daily interest, okay, we need to basically spread that interest out over 14 days and find out what percentage that is. Okay, so this is how we can do that. Refer to your formulas. I equals PRT. That's an important one, right? So the interest that was charged was two thirty-five twenty. The principal was fourteen hundred dollars. The rate we don't know, so that's unknown. And the time is fourteen days. Now, if we solve for R here, that will give us the decimal form. It's always decimal form for rates in these equations, and it'll give us per day. Why? Because this is in days. So this rate will be uh, per day, okay? So they will be the same unit, okay? So we multiply the 1400 times the 14 to get this number. We divide both sides by that number. That will give us the decimal form of R. Multiply that by 100 and we can see what the percentage is per day. That's 1.2% per day, okay? which if you remember to those credit card loans, and those percents were pretty high too, but it was like 0.05% per day or something, like really small. This is 1.2%. So to get an idea of what that is per year, let's calculate the annual interest rate. So if that's 1.2% interest, percent interest every day, what we do is we multiply that 1.2 times however many days there are in a year, and check this out. Payday loans are charging like 438% annual interest all right so you know 20 percent is really high for a credit card but think about this 438 percent so you definitely don't want to let yeah you, go, you want to be careful with those payday loans uh, i won't go through the alternative solution here because it might just be a little more confusing so let's do question number one and build your skills together now okay so question number one says Burrell borrowed $250 from a payday loan company and had to repay $275 in 15 days. Calculate the annual interest rate, okay? 
So let's do the exact same thing we did before. Let's start with our formula. I equals P R T. So we know what the interest is, or actually we can calculate what the interest is. It's the difference between 275 and 250. Without your calculator, what is that? Anybody? What's the difference there? What's the difference between 275 and 250? Okay, so 250 plus 25 is 275. So it's going to be $25. All right. Okay, now the principal was 250. Right, that's what we paid back. The, uh, sorry, that's what we borrowed. The R we don't know, and the time is 15 days. Okay, so remember, this is 15 is days, R is going to be per day. All right, so let's do the same thing we did with that other example. Let's multiply 250, okay, um, times, um, what are we going to do, 15 there, I guess, 15, okay, so 3750. So we're going to divide both sides of this equation by 3750, because that will get rid of the 250 times 15. So we're going to have R equals 25 divided by that 3750. Okay, so what's that going to be? That's point zero zero six seven okay now that's going to be the decimal form of the percent per day right so that's going to be zero point six seven percent per day is that what the question is asking for no the question is asking for annual interest rate so if this is the percent per day because we were given 15 days so let's multiply this, so 0.67. It would be nice to draw an arrow, uh, you know, to, to say where you're going with your work. So 0.67% per day times 365 days. So what's that going to give us? And it's just times 365, and that's going to be 2.43. Okay. Let's see, 2.43. Um, did I do that right? No, I didn't change that into a decimal, did I? Sorry. Sorry. I didn't change this one into a decimal, so I got to multiply this by 100 still. Sorry. So let me just do this again, guys. This 0.67, I used the old number, but I shouldn't have. So 0.67 times 365. 244.5 or so. Okay, my bad. I changed it here, but I didn't change it on the calculator. Okay. So that's going to be, what do we say, 245? 244.55%. Okay, so that's 244.55% per year. Ouch. That's a lot. Okay? All right. And if you didn't round that number, if you used all this, you know, 0.6 repeating, you would have got something like, um, should be about 243 or so. But if you rounded the decimal, that's totally fine. Okay? All right. So uh, why don't you take a few minutes here and do this next question, number two. I'll show you the answer in a few minutes. See if you can do exactly what we just did, and then we'll move on to the next section. Okay? Okay, so this is the, uh, the work for number two. Very, very similar to number one. Let me show you one little difference so that you can do, okay? So if you wanna find the annual interest rate first, we've been finding the daily interest rate first, but if you wanna find the, the annual interest rate first, look at what I've done here. You see this right here, guys? Instead of using 10 days to find the daily interest rate, I, I wrote this 10 as a year. So that's 10 out of 365. That's years now. So now by doing that, I've done this in years. 
So this rate is going to be per year as well, you see? So if you want to go straight to that, you can. So the R here is 1.37, that's 137%, and the unit is in per years because 10 out of 365, 10 days is 10 365 of a year, okay? So you could do that as well if you want. And then you could just divide that yearly percent by 365 to give you the daily percent. So that's kind of an alternate way of doing that, finding the annual first. Up here in number one, we found the daily first, right? So here's just days, and this would be per day. Here's a percent per day. And then we multiplied by 365 to get the year. Here I just kind of did it the other way around. Okay, so number three will be your responsibility. Um, we're not going to go through that here today. Instead, we're going to move to the second part of 6.4 here today. So there's number three, which you'll do, you know, whatever. You'll do that tonight.